Welcome back, everybody. We now continue with my interview with Christopher Nolan, already in progress. You did write part of the film in the first person. Yeah. You say, like, in the Oppenheimer scenes, it is, I walked into the room, or I walked into the room, I am yeah. standing here. So why write that in the first person? Well, first and foremost, to scare the hell out of Killian Murphy when he read the script. To present him with that challenge. and Say, okay, we're in your head. Had you ever done it before? No. And I, I don't know if anyone's done it before. It's not really the way scripts are written. But as I started to write the script, I felt insufficiently connected, you know, insufficiently inside his head. And I knew that, for me, the key to telling this story was total subjectivity. It was just really feeling like you're, you're inside this guy. How did Killian feel when he read that? Did he say anything when he saw this? He not not right away, no. He, I mean, he, you know, I, I'd already sort of called him up and said to him, come on, you're gonna come and do this with me, aren't you? And he'd said, sure, absolutely, I'm in then read the script. That's a scary thing for an actor. Um, he, I think his head was, was fully just spinning from the experience of reading the script. But we definitely talked early on about the responsibility he was gonna have as a conduit for the audience, as, as somebody to just carry the audience with him. Um, you've gotta feel his feelings, but you've also gotta think his thoughts, which for somebody like J. Robert Oppenheimer, who is a genius with an intellectual capacity far beyond any of us, not to speak for you, certainly for me. <laughs> He's one of the great thinkers uh, of all time, you know, up there with people like Einstein and all the rest. So um, how do you open up his process of inspiration, his thought process to an audience and make it comprehensible and understandable? And a lot of that is just Killian's ability, his extraordinary empathetic ability to sort of carry the audience with him and bring them into his way of looking at the world. And that's what great movie stars do. I mean, they're great actors, but they also have that, that compelling charisma to just sort of take the audience with them. You've worked with Killian how many movies now? Six movies, 20 years. And, yeah. and he tried out for Batman. There are pictures of him online of him in the bat suit. Yeah. He looks pretty good in the bat suit. Why no Killian Batman? Why no Irish Batman? Because there was a Christian, a Christian Bale Batman, and uh, we screen tested, I think, five different actors. And yeah. Killian was the last to come in. I'd seen a, a photograph of him in the newspaper uh, promoting uh, Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later. And I was just very struck by the look of him. And I thought, well, let's just get him in, put him in as a number five, see what we get kind of thing. Met with him. We formed an immediate creative connection. I think he's just one of the most extraordinary artists I've ever met. What did you see in him for Oppenheimer? other than the unbelievable baby blues. Well, that's it's like a, looking at a Alaskan Malamute or something. It's a big, big part of it. I mean, I, I try not to think of actors when I'm writing because I don't want to limit what the character could be. And if you're thinking of an actor, you're thinking of something they've already done. Mm -hmm. So I try, particularly dealing with real characters as well, real people, I try to just be pure to that. But then when I'm finished, you know, American Prometheus sitting on my desk, this picture of, Oppenheimer with his incredible eyes and that incredible stare. And I just was like, yeah, I know who can do that. I know, I know the guy who has those eyes, who has that ability to, to draw the audience in um, with that intensity. What do you do as a director when you've got six movie stars in your movie? At least yeah. six movie stars, multiple Oscar winners out there. Yeah. Um, Emma and myself, Emma, my producer and wife, uh, we, for years, we've tried to sort of set the terms of how we're gonna make the film with people before they come and just sort of say, you know, it's not going to be, you know, a pampered movie star experience because we found that that hinders the work. What we want is a team effort. What we want is everybody just working together and, and keeping it all about the work. And, um, you know, we found that, that even the biggest movie stars in the world, like Robert Downey Jr. or whatever, kind of refreshed by that and, and thrilled to sort of turn up and just, focus on the craft, just focus on acting. It's great to see Robert Downey Jr. Um, out of Iron Man mode. Mm. Not to take anything away from that performance, it was a beautiful performance, but in this, when he's playing Louis Strauss, um, when you won Best Director at the Golden Globes last month, you mentioned that the last time you were on stage to uh, accept um, a posthumous award for Heath Ledger's work in The Dark Knight, and you spoke of catching Robert Downey Jr.'s eye. Mm. in that moment, and him looking at you and supporting you in that moment. Did you come back to that moment when you thought of him for this part? 
I did, because I think that you're looking with anybody you work with, with actors you can you work with, you're, you're looking for some kind of connection emotionally, empathetically. You, you're looking for some, I, I would term it, talking about Robert Downey Jr.'s generosity. He has this incredible generosity of spirit and it means that when he's in a scene with other people, he's making sure that they're all doing their best, that they're all able to bring their, their best to the table. And he's helping them clarify all those emotional connections and the rest. So I've always wanted to work with him. I've always seen that in his work, you know, and he has such charisma as Tony Stark. I mean, I think him playing Iron Man is one of the most consequential casting decisions that's ever been made in the history of the movie business. And I, I wanted to give him the opportunity to lose himself in a part, lose himself in, in another human being the way that great actors love to. When we return, I asked Christopher Nolan if he knows how to build an atomic bomb. <laughs> 